And getting older every day. Getting older every day. That's it. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, I don't want to hit that again. No, you do not want to hit that again. Here we go. Got to get this all taken care of. Hey, you're going to get it right this time. Almost first time off. Oh, don't Look say nothing. That. I Look will at that. end up. Look at that. She did it. Yay. <laughs> I will end up bumping a button and messing something all up right, after all, all that. Right. Uh, hello, everybody. It's Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead. Um, a lot of people in the chat. A lot of people have sent me messages. They've already received their um, blessings that we sent out. Miss Nadia is in the chat. Uh, we chose her for the they go bed. bed. Yep. Um, she will probably be getting it within the next couple of weeks. Um, what else we got going on? I don't know. We all through now. We about we all through. Yeah, we're all through. Um, just getting ready for some warm weather. That's what we're looking forward to. Warm weather. Yeah, we actually stayed outside today. Um, all day long. We uh, we actually started our day off in kind of an unusual way, though. <laughs> we had a cow get out, and we had to fix fence first thing this morning. Yeah, and Miss Daisy. Miss, Miss Daisy don't like it because it's just her and Miss Tr uh, Dixie and Mr. Mr. Dexter. And I guess she just get lonely. She wanted to go visit the neighbors or something other, so... She got out last night and had to get her back in and had to fix fences this morning. So, you know how it is when you have cows. It's always something. Yeah. So, we got that done. Yeah. Actually, spent the first three quarters of the day shooting videos, just about. Probably most of the morning and part of the afternoon. Yeah. Uh, we... And it's all because of you people. <laughs> Danny said... These, these people don't know that it takes a lot of time to even do videos. He said, I could be doing something else. And well, I mean, what we did was we, we shot some videos. Y'all requested that we shoot some videos on how we amend the raised Vego beds. Well, that wasn't what we and started out with. We started no, out in the high tunnels. We started out in the high tunnels at Deep South. Going in there, we had to... We've done um, some things there. Yeah, we... we videoed a bunch of stuff um, there and then we came over to pecan grove and we had to um, uh, amend the beds i guess you would say based off of the soil samples um, that we took we showed the beds that are in the 60 foot raised bed we did one on it we done one on uh, mending soils so we have them from here at deep south and from pecan grove so videos will be going up um mainly most of them on Pecan Grove, but the ones in the high tunnel here will be on Deep South. So that was kind of fun. That was kind of, it was an interesting morning. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it, what it does is it excites you when you start actually seeing. Oh, we harvested. That's what we were doing. Basically, yes, we, we had a harvest. We had a harvest today. We had a really good harvest got... today. Um, you can, I don't know. I, do... I can show them one sneak. Preview. You'll give them a little it's sneak gonna peek. It's going to be on Pecan Grove. Let me uh, let's see. What do you got a sneak peek of here that you're going to show them? Where'd it go? I don't know because I don't know what you're looking for. That one right there. Oh, yeah. This is from Pecan Grove, guys. And I want y'all to take a good long look at this. Let me see if I can get it where you can see it. Look at this. And he ain't going to tell you about it, but that's the... That's the picture. That's the gist of it right there. And y'all see, y'all see what he has in his hand. And if any of you can't grow carrots. Yep, if you got problems having those kind of <laughs> kind of harvests, you need to come on over to the Etsy store because we got a book that we wrote over there that really will help you out. And to, with anything, growing is... I don't know. I, we can't say that it's, um, that you, do, I mean, he is good at growing carrots, but you have some that do good, some that do bad. And, you know, we, we just, sometimes we have really good carrot yeah. harvest and sometimes we don't. And what'd you have for supper? I had carrot salad for supper tonight. And we also had 
Oh, we had venison. I mean, and we just had stir fry, with stir carrots fry with it. carrots, and we had cabbage, and I mean, <coughs> all kinds of. Miss Wanda had some asparaguses. We had all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people are saying they had snow. These are the uh, Danvers. Corotta. No, that's right. This is Corotta. These are Corotta. That's right. We did Corotas. We've been doing Corotas a couple of years now, two, three years. We have found that in the deep south where we live at, the Corotta, which is native to Hawaii, uh, we get them from Kitazawa Seed Company, uh, really is the best carrot for us here in the deep south. Uh, they said Hoss Tools is carrying the Corotta now, too. Uh, I wouldn't doubt it. Greg and him, I mean, they, they stay up on they southern st stuff. Yeah, they stay up with the southern stuff. I mean, we help them get a few things going there. Um, <laughs> the Nostra said he's the world, or he or she said, world's record holder for small, smallest carrots. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't uh, know. There's quite a few of, of us out there. Uh, yeah. So. But we, uh, you know, we, we did get a pretty good, decent harvest today. Um, now, we didn't harvest all of them. We just harvested no, that, some. No, we just, our, our goal here at, at, uh, at Deep South Homestead is to be able to walk out the door 365 days a year and have something fresh to eat, no matter if it's a fruit, a berry, a nut, a vegetable, uh, whatever. You know, whatever it is. Okay, let me show my shirt. Way, truth, life. Jesus. Jesus, way, it truth, is. and life. Yes, one of um, my new shirts, yes. And I like the color. Mm. Um, uh, Sheila 80 says, do you can or freeze carrots after you harvest them? Uh, no, both. We've done both. I shred some. I've but, got to where I've been shredding them fresh and not doing anything with them. Just shred them, put them in a bag, and seal them down where there's no air in them, and put them in the freezer, and I can make his carrot salad out of them. Then we've canned carrots. Sometimes in the past, we've canned as many as, what, 30 jars a day? Oh, at least 30 a day. Sometimes, and, uh, sometimes hundreds a week. In a week, yes. Yeah. Because we do a lot of carrots, and we eat a lot of carrots. Um, and then I've freeze-dried some. Yeah. Um, I can make his carrot salad with freeze-dried carrots. So we can do them all ways. But last year, we just left them in the bed, and I go out there every couple of days and harvest a handful of them. They do get the hair roots on them, but they still eat. They're still good, and they lasted how, several months. Oh, yeah, they last for months. So, yeah. even in our temperature, they lasted a while. I mean, so, that's how we started our day off today. Then, uh... Vicky wants to know which of your critters get the carrot greens. Oh, my bunny rabbits. The chickens get a few, but the bunny rabbits get most of them. And I did feed some today. <laughs> oh, my word. Y'all, I, I don't know. Miss Wanda might have got some video of it when I was... Mr. Duke, well, did you get any when I was... Mr. Duke kept snatching the carrots out of my hands. I don't know if I was or not. I can't remember. Oh. Maybe. But... This this bull is so spoiled <laughs> that he is just, he's a goober, I'm going to tell you. You cannot feed anybody. He's going to take it all. I mean, he. Well, where Dexter, his dad, he would turn his nose up to a lot of stuff. Yeah. And all the girls would get the uh, sweet potatoes and stuff like yeah. that. Duke is just the just opposite. Pushes all the girls out of the way. He's grabbing everything. Danny tries to hand it to one. He's just grabbing. He don't want nobody to have nothing. So yeah, um, it yeah. is crazy. Yeah, Mr. Duke is a little bit different than his daddy Dexter. Mr. Dexter considers the ladies, you know, and he Duke backs don't. off. And Duke, he could care less. He just runs up in there and gets it all. All right, ABC XYZ says she got her book today. Great. Oh, great, great. Um, so, and tonight I did the stir fry, I, I sauteed down some onions, added, um, a potato, I just peeled it and cut it up in small little pieces, like cubed, small cubes, put it in there, added some shredded carrots, and cooked that down for a little while till the potatoes were tender, and then I turned it off, threw some cabbage, I just, we, we harvested cabbage today. Yep. Cut out a couple of handfuls of cabbage, threw it on top, shut the lid, and just left it till we got ready to eat, and that perfect. It just it just kind of wilted the cabbage without cooking it all to pieces. It was amazing. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, so I mean, we've we uh then we worked in our gardens after we got through with that. We um we planted a few things. Yeah, we we, we you planted amended things. We I actually did the video for you guys. Now I amended <laughs> the beds based on the uh what you want. What to you do. want? What about what the paperwork we got back? Uh, I did it because y'all asked me to do it. Ms. Wanda got on to me because I was just going to go out there and do it. And she says, nope, these people want to see how you amend those beds. So I took the time and did it. Um, when do you plant sweet potatoes? That's butterfly. When do I plant my sweet potatoes? After the danger of all frost is gone and I have a place to put them in the ground. Now I'm going to be doing some sweet potatoes in my high tunnel and Danny's high tunnel. We're going to do the outside beds of both, <clears throat> um, and see how we do in there because we're not really planting it deep south this year and not the fields. Not the fields. Um, we could, but Danny wanted to let it rest. Last year was tough on it with that drought. And at Pecan Grove, it's kind of hard to find a spot right now. But when our potatoes come out, then we will be putting slips in there with sweet potatoes. When the beans come out, we'll put slips there for sweet potatoes. And uh, we've got some raised, in the raised bed, um, maybe when the garlic comes out. Yeah. And the onions. We uh, may, may do all It of depends it. because we've got to get some okra over at, well, uh, yeah, we gotta have at, okra here. at Pecan Grove. We're going to plant some at Deep South in the, in in the, the raised beds in the high tone. Yeah, my centers. Uh, but we got to find a place over at Pecan Grove to definitely put some okra in. How's your peanuts? Oh, the peanuts is coming right on along. As a matter of fact, Miss Wanda got some in the video coming up, so just hang in there, y'all. Hang in there. We got to go over to Pecan Grove, though. Yep, I'm you got to be subscribed videos. to Pecan Grove and go over there because that's where all the videos is going to be. And we're going to be giving away another Vago bed in April. Yes, in April. If you're a subscriber of Pecan Grove, you will get a chance to win a Vago bed. Yeah, okra is one of those that likes warm climate, so we weren't in a hurry to do okra yet, and we weren't really in a hurry for um, sweet potatoes yet, even though our slips are coming up. And I, the ones, if it's they're ready, I'll put them in the high tunnels first because they will be protected. And... Right now, we've got a lot of stuff outside that ain't protected. We've got a lot <laughs> of stuff outside that ain't protected. Oh. I mean, I got to tell them what I seen this morning. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I got up at daylight this morning because you know, we knew we had to go take care of the fence where the cow had got out and everything. So I was up at daylight. And I told Miss Wanda, I said, before I go take care of this fence, I got to go to Pecan Grove and I got to take care of my cows over there because I don't know how long this is going to take over here. So I come over to Pecan Grove, and guys, you're not going to ever, you know, you just, we've got bone sauce around all of our gardens. We've got the, the barking dog and shooting gun monitors around all of our gardens. Well, the deer have learned how to avoid that. So they don't go in the fields, or they haven't yet. When I got up, the, <laughs> got to the barn, the deer were in my corral. He come back telling me that, and I was dying. They were just jumping around in the corral playing, and I'm like, "Really?" And I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna be as honest as a man can be. I went and got my gun. If they stay, and I went back to the corral. If they's in there, I was gonna shoot them. I mean, <laughs> he was like, "This is ridiculous." <laughs> I build stuff for the cows. He come back going. Guess what was in the barn? He said they were right at the door of the barn. Right at the like, door of the barn. I mean, and my corn is right outside the barn, but they was not in the cornfield. They was in the corral. I said, the next thing you know, they're going to come under the barn and be eaten out of stalls. That would probably be true. Yeah, they were. he said they were just playing. I they were just there, playing. But, uh, finding out that with cancer, faith, and hope is planting the garden. Yes. Yep. There aren't many bees around. I heard Hoss mention you need bees to pollinate watermelon plants. What do you suggest to help with that? Technically, when Hoss says you need bees to pollinate watermelon plants, honeybees, let me say this. Most people don't understand this. Honeybees pollinate very few vegetables in the garden. Honeybees mainly pollinate fruit trees and uh stuff to that nature flowers in the early, flowers in the early stages and stuff like that 
usually crops like peas and beans and tomatoes and squash and all that kind of stuff. Watermelons. Watermelons, cucumbers, uh, cantaloupes, and all this kind of stuff are pollinated by bumblebees. Uh, and God knows we have enough bumblebees for the world down here in the deep south. Every time you turn around, our blueberry bushes, we must have had 100,000 on these blueberry bushes. Okay, so I don't know what Delta Prepper means. He says, there will be a guest on porch time soon. I'm not sure who the guest is. <laughs> I guess he's saying the deer. Uh, but his condo is way away from the barn. <laughs> yeah, my condo is like a quarter of a mile away from the barn, to be exact. It's a, it's a quarter of a mile from the barn, yeah. Where can we, uh, Suzanne Tar Tate says, where can we get bone sauce, please? Go over to uh, Perma Pastures Farm, and they have a website. They have a I website believe. over there where you can, uh, from Mr. Billy and Ms. Michelle and William, you can get the bone sauce through them. Uh, it has really turned out to be a lifesaver for us. Uh, Tamara says she ordered uh, what is that? Some of the barking dog shooting gun alarms for my corn and peat field. Well, you can tape your own message on those too. And Danny wants to. <laughs> yeah. I just don't know what he's gonna do when he. I want. This is what I want to put on ours. I want to put. I want to put on ours, especially the ones out by the road or something like that. I want to put up. Put your hands up in the air before I shoot. You know, and every time you move, that repeats itself. And I just want to see if it'd still be somebody standing there the next morning if they was if they were trespassing. <laughs> Still standing there with her arms like, Sir, I can't hold my arms up no more. You just told 300,000 people that might want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, there's not ever 300,000 no, people No, it's on never there. 300. Oh, more like two or 3,000, maybe. Yeah, Pastor Scott says, Put the condo in the barn. He just about... I, yeah, well, I mean, technically, my barn is so nice, really, I could sit in it. and, and I, I'd You be, could open that back door. Isn't there a back door on that barn? Up top they are. And and sit in the the, Yeah, it has a loft in it. I could open the barn door up on the loft and just sit up there and, and in the evening time or early in the morning at night. Uh oh, we got a we got a troll. Jace says I like your channel. Thank you, Jace. Yeah. Um oh, all right. see. you might have to edit videos if they go off during a video. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. they went off off and on because the wind is triggering when the, the ribbons blow that he has yeah, out for deer two. Um, when the when the wind blows and the ribbons blow, it'll set it off sometimes. Yep. So, and Danny had it set just where it would work at night with the infrared, but we had one smart little deer that figured yep. out that it mm. wasn't on during the day. And he come around and he didn't eat anything. He didn't eat nothing, but, but he uh, walked around through our garden. And I'm like, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope, so nope. he leaves it on day and night yep. just because. Because they get smart. They figure out things. And that's the one you've seen what, almost every time. At, I, at I see Grove. this. I see that deer over at Pecan Grove so much. Uh, Christopher Kimball says, <laughs> ah, Mr. Chris says, Danny, the day you sit down is a day something's wrong. Exactly, Chris. Chris. Well, did you like that the... Chris, you, are Chris, in the barn oh. or at the barn? Chris, you missed it, my friend. The day you were supposed to come back and, and, and be over here, I hit the gold mine. He's sitting here banging his glasses. I'm sorry, I'm banging my glasses on the table here. I hit the gold mine. Next time you're over, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, Mr. Denon was blown away. He's like, how in the world do you come up with these deals? You know, <laughs> and you would have been there to help me go get it, but you were working on something else. And I'm glad he was working. And I'm so. glad you were because I'm glad you're getting it going. I really, I am, uh, because it was really a blessing to me. Yeah. So, but Danny did get a a good haul this week. I did. Um, I got a I got a deal of a lifetime this I week. I don't know if we'll show a whole lot of it, but. We can say that some of it was um, stainless shelving. Let's just say we got... And some other stuff, and it was really nice. So some of it we may show in different aspects around the property as we use it. Yep. But we were blessed. Let's just say this. Thank you, Uncle Sam. <laughs> I got a lot of my tax dollars back this week. Let's just put it that way. 
Have you ever used the Back to Eden method of gardening? Well, yes. Uh, what is that? Gizmo. Yes, I have. <laughs> Gizmo 9067. Uh, yeah. If you had been, if you had been a subscriber of ours very long, you would know that uh, we actually done a video with uh, Starry Hilder, didn't we? Uh, we talked with her about Back to Eden gardening. Uh, and Idaho versus the Deep South. Yeah. Yes. That year we did, uh, I think for almost two years, we did uh, Back to Eden. And the fire ants and the stuff Look, just went crazy. <laughs> don't, I don't have nothing for Back to Eden in the Deep South. I'm just going to tell you. I, I have nothing and for And we're it. having trouble even now since it started raining with the fire ants coming to the surface again. They had last year with the drought, they kind of dissipated. And we, we were being thankful but they're starting again, so we're having to watch for fire ants everywhere. Yep. But back to Eden, we produced food. They made food. I can't food. say, I can't say that it didn't food. It yeah, did. it did produce food. It made food. But it produced as much trouble and as much... We had to pull it, weeds. It was harder on us than regular gardening. Yeah, we had to pull weeds. It doesn't keep the weeds out unless you... you now, we, here, you would have to have, like, a couple of feet of mulch. Yeah. And just a couple of, like... What what we have five or six inches? Yeah, we had like six inches um, of mulch. The weeds just grow through that like yeah. crazy. Now if you're up north, that's that was the thing that we talked with Starry about. Starry and we were real good friends and we were sitting there talking. Where she lived at in Idaho, back to Eden worked fantastic, you know. Because she can't plant in the ground there or she couldn't. She then. could well she could plant in the ground, but she had a lot of rocks in the ground. And, and by she was doing on the a mountainside. Mountainside. Yeah, by doing the Back to Eden method, her stuff actually done really well because there's no fire ants, there's no termites to worry with, none of that kind of stuff. And down here, uh, they just they just took over, eat up all of our little plants, eat up all of our seeds. Yeah. And get ready, people! In the central part of the United States and in the northern part, some of them, especially the northeast, uh, the fire ants are moving north. Y'all are gonna get to enjoy some of the beauties of life that we get to enjoy in the deep south. <laughs> Oh, somebody's have been fighting. Uh, Darlene says so she's fighting the fire ants in Texas. Oh yeah, yep. Are we? Are y'all going to make a harvest shed at Pecan Grove? That's double A. Um, uh, not really a harvest shed. And not probably not a harvest shed. I mean, uh, Danny's got the prepper shack. I've got the prepper shack, but that'll be for to, something different. Yeah, if we wanted to, we could use it. For whatever, because he is going to have... Are you you are going to have a sink, right? Yes, I'm going to have a sink. Yeah. So, I mean, if I needed to put Matter something fact, I'm, in there... I'm fixing to install... And it's right by the high tunnel. I'm going to install two or three sinks around over at Pecan Grove because it just needs places to wash your hands and, you know, yeah. wash your vegetables off and everything. Um, Nemo... Nemo doesn't work on fire ants. They might work on other ants, but the fire ants that we have are imported fire ants. They come out of hell. And they were shipped here from hell. <laughs> you can't stop them. The only thing that stops them is gasoline, and that's because it's as hot as hell when you burn them. <laughs> Jersey Girl says, no, keep your fire ants. <laughs> well, when y'all keep y'all's cold weather, we'll keep our fire ants. That's it. <laughs> oh, we don't need that cold weather down here. The pe people like their snow and their ice and all this stuff, and I'm like, uh -uh. I like growing year-round. I like growing year-round. Uh, when it comes to... Snow and ice, growing year-round. I take my food all day long. Um, how do you get rid of the ant fire ants? <laughs> Move. Move way north. Janice uh, Hargill, Harry Gill, I can't, it went away before I could get to it. Um, this thing's moving so fast. Uh, right there. What's all the hype of solar eclipses on April the 8th? There's been plenty of them, but this one is getting more publicity. What's different, Mr. Danny? Well, this one is different. They, sure, there's lots of solar eclipses, but not like this one. Uh, it's been, what, 17 years since we had one like this? Uh, uh, something like that. I forget how many years it is. But these type solar eclipses don't happen very often. And... This particular one, they're saying, has biblical ramifications about it. 
because of where it's going through the United States in 1812 or 1811, somewhere in that vicinity, we had one that did exactly the same thing on exactly the same day. I mean, six, well, how, how did they say that? Sixth year, sixth month, sixth day, uh, something like that. And uh, it, uh, we had earthquakes afterwards. Matter of fact, the New Madrid Fault went off the next year after that one and this one goes across uh the city of called jonah several cities called nineveh and there's a lot of prophetic stuff behind it they're saying so now i don't know um it's just gonna be another day I, unless I think something happens here <laughs> i think it's just gonna be another day for us but we are actively watching because it's a prime time for somebody to do something. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Okay. Freddie Flores says, what kind of state of U.S. do you live? I'm asking for the accent. And then he puts in some Spanish that I don't know about. But uh, anyway, we are from South Mississippi, the bottom part of the United States. Yeah, we live in southern United States. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where we at? Did everyone get their solar eclipse glasses so they can view the eclipse? Nope. Nope. We missed out. We, we missed out on that one. All we have is welding shields. And welding shields do work. They do work. Just for, for any of you homesteaders that want the cheap way to see something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm with prep for eternity there, Mr. Dynam. If it is, come, Lord, come. Yes. Just another day in paradise. That's the way I feel. Yep. You know, whatever. Um, we'll be keeping an eye on things. We'll be watching other events around the world. Not just that, because while you're watching that, somebody else somewhere else could be doing something. So keep your eyes on other things, too. You can look up and watch the eclipse. But Woman of Spirit says seven cities called Nineveh. The eclipse passes over. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, one says they were debating on paying $2 for solar glasses. I think they'll use a welding helmet. Yeah, it, you know, it's one of those. That's what we used last time. Yeah, we just used a welding shield. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, let's see. No glasses here in Pennsylvania. Well, I mean, the key thing is this. Let me, let me tell you this. The key thing is this. Don't worry about the day of the eclipse. The only thing you got to worry about on the day of the eclipse is that there's so many maniacs in the world that's going to be trying to go where this thing's crossing the United States at. They're going to try to gather up there. And if you live, if you in live in area, one of those areas, stay home. Keep an eye on it. You know, just don't go out there and get caught up in it. Just walk outside and look up if it's not cloudy that day. You know, it'd be our luck. It'd be cloudy that day. Uh, but the, the the key thing is, it's probably going to be. Let's just do this, okay? Uh, watch the week after the eclipse. That's when you got to kind of uh, pay attention is the week after the eclipse. Delta Prepper said he's just outside of the totality path in North Mississippi. Okay. I was wondering about that. It said Delta Prepper, so. Hmm. Dale from Ohio says, solar eclipse, I'm praying for rain that day. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> We like our rain. Also, um, Moments of Divine says there's also cities called Salem in all this. So, uh, the local libraries are giving out eclipse glasses. Really? Go to your local library and see. Um, and look, if, if you live in a place where people's going to be gathering up, I, I suggest you go get water, That's what gas, Darlene's saying, too. Get your food ahead of time and all this kind of stuff because... It's going to probably get chaotic. And remember what I told you as a tip here a week or so ago? Stay away from crowds right now. Because uh, after what happened over in Russia today or yesterday, uh, Couple of, yeah, yesterday. you might want to reconsider being in crowds. Let's just put it that way. All right. The uh, do you, What do you think? Oh, well, you just mentioned that, and they're talking about it. Okay. Um, all right, watch the sun and uh, the solar. I got my glasses right here. These I are, have see, my glasses. These, see, these, these, my these glasses. are the blue. Keep the blue, lens, uh, the blue light off. 
Yeah, Lisa said I wasn't all that taken up with the last clip. Me either. We walked outside, looked up for what? Wait, Jesse and Patty were here. We ten minutes. Yeah, it was a partial eclipse. Now this is a total eclipse. Yeah, we, it's we a little at, different. It's a little bit different. We were outside. Oh, let me just tell you. Few minutes and then went back in and said, "Heck with it." What's know? What's different about this eclipse is that there is a comet. That if you looked really, really close. Now I didn't say this. You just this just happened to slip out of my mouth. Uh, <laughs> If you look really, really close at the eclipse, you'll see there's a comet in the background. While the sun is darkened, there will be the evidence of a comet in the background. Did I say that? No. Oh, I didn't think I did. Uh, Maria Torres says she thought we were in Georgia. She said, I knew that, but she said, I don't know. She said, I thought Georgia. Um ABC uh, says, we'll be busy keeping the youngest grandbaby like every other day. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be, you know, one of those things. Um, Vicky says, I'm in the backside of nowhere or nevermore. You must be our neighbor somewhere if you're in the backside of nevermore. Um, she'll watch from her porch. <laughs> yeah. You know, we'll walk outside, but we'll probably already be outside. Just, you know, it's we don't get hung up on these things like it's something no, really special. We don't. Uh, things happen. You have a lunar eclipse, solar eclipse, a partial eclipse, a total eclipse. I mean, they happen all the time. They are. And some things well, can be prophetic. They are and, prophetic. And lunar eclipses deal with the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, you, they, they, they always have. We have a blood moon. We have a... Uh, a solar eclipse. We have a comet. We have <laughs> everything happening at once. We have all this stuff within a, like a, a week or two period there. You know, what I mean, it's like crazy. Are they actually letting the kids off that day? Somebody says because the kids won't go to school anyway. That's really weird. What? I I would have thought when we were kids, we went to school and the teachers took us outside. Yeah. And gave everybody the cute little glasses yep. and we got to look up. At the sun, I remember going outside from at school, out in the yeah. playground and looking up for an eclipse. I mean, that's been hmm, fifty years ago, fifty-five. Yeah, it's been a more. Been. <laughs> at least fifty-five years ago. Shh. <laughs> Hush. Nowadays, they're like everybody stay home, don't go to school, and we're like, teacher says, okay, it's. Time we're going to walk well, outside. Look at this. Um, <laughs> Danny and, and Brooke says schools are closed there for the eclipse. That's what I'm saying. We went to school, and when the teacher thought it's time, okay, everybody walk outside. Here's your little glasses, you know. And then we went back in, and it was a done deal. No big deal. You went outside and come back in. You still had school. What What's a big deal? They let school off now for anything. They do. I got my sippy cup tonight. Y'all can see that we're still using our sippy cup. Um, that's because you'll see on the top of it here. It has, I uh, mean, we made shoebox viewers in school. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we did all that kind of stuff. But I mean, really, what? Now, Ms. Wanda, she's got her sippy cup too. I got and hers. Uh, hers is made different than mine. Hers has Estelado Hacia Arriba wrote on top of it because she can't remember which side's up. <laughs> <laughs> mine says Cujo Yardware. Oh, Thank you, man, Cujo man, Shoes. Man, man. Oh, boy, boy, boy. Oh, Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. Anyway. Okay, enough about the eclipse. Uh, Auntie Am says a lunar eclipse is on the 24th. Yeah. They're having all kinds of stuff. Uh, Tamara says they're closing schools in Texas. They're saying... The we school, missed out as a kid, you know? School closes for liability reasons. They didn't care about liability Wait, reasons. And we, a tornado coming through... Y'all get in the hallway, put your head between your legs, legs. And, and when the bus runs, we'll get you on the bus. Ain't that what they told us? That's just crazy. <laughs> uh, Sue Roberts says schools are closed and big factories are closed for a couple of days. That is crazy. We're shutting the nation down because of something that normally happens? We went outside when it was raining as long as it wasn't thundering and popping right close. Lord have mercy. I mean... And we survived. And we lived. We lived through it. <laughs> oh, my word. The grandkids were here, what, uh, almost two weeks ago, and Caden 
Abby were out playing in the rain. They, actually, they were playing football, tossing it back and forth under the shed. And when they there was a bucket of water there, and they got to playing, and they the football would land in the water, and when it did, it splattered water all over them. So they ended up playing in the rain. They just their mama uh, just looked out and says, "Go ahead, whatever." Uh, Vicki Shelby says, Danny, have you ever planted carrot seeds in a strip? No, I really haven't because I, I don't need to. I grow them really well without that. I mean, you I, tried and I'm pretty, one year. I, not the strip. Oh, the strip. Yeah, you oh, know, I you, thought you, you meant you no, planted not, them not in plant, a row. That's a row. No, she's talking about that strip that's got the seeds on it. Oh, no, we hadn't tried that. Uh, they're talking about closing airports, they said. <laughs> Oh, it's, Lord. It's a sad, sad day in this nation, I'm going to tell you all. Debbie, peanuts will grow, oh, in central Minnesota. I don't know about that far. Ah, away. that's probably too far north for peanuts. I mean, you getting any rain there for your ponds? We, uh, Badonk, uh, we got a quarter of an inch of rain this time when everybody said we was going to get a flood, you know, so, no, nope, we ain't got no rain yet. As a matter of fact, we don't have a pond at our house here at Deep South or at Pecan Grove that is full of water. All right. Raw Food Rider wants to know, can you name some of the crops that are best for growing in a raised bed? Oh, Raw Food Rider. You can grow anything in a raised bed except corn. Now, corn don't do too good in a raised bed, but you can do peppers, tomatoes, <laughs> I mean, cantaloupes, watermelons, green beans, okra. I mean, you name it. Anything, broccoli, cauliflower, I mean, spinach, turnips, you know, squash. Tomatoes, peppers. They all grow in it. Field peas. I've grown everything. Sunflowers. I've grown everything. Jeff said, we walked barefoot in the snow and uphill when we were young. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the way it was when we were younger. I mean, it, we, we rode bicycles barefoot without a helmet and knee pads and all this stuff. And Now, wild turkey. Yes, I, we went through. Now, y'all got to remember, we, we were the... Uh, we were the Cold War era kids, <laughs> okay? That we is funny. we went through all kind of supposedly quote unquote nuclear training at our schools and bomb threats and stuff like that. We would have to go into the halls and we'd put our backs against the block walls. We'd bend over and put our heads between our knees and we would sit there. And of course, you always had that smart aleck in the class and saying, "Kiss your ass goodbye." I mean, you always. <laughs> You always had Somebody that. Somebody said it. Somebody's going to always say it, you know. And we were taught in some of my training. We were taught how to take your your rifles, and you would put them underneath your clothes and lay with the barrel right upside your head, not un uh, not exposed to the uh, fallout. You would lay on it on your belly like that, and you didn't uh, you didn't get up until after because when the bomb went off, it blew out, and you had to wait for the sucking part to go back up. Because it come over like 16 inches above the ground. And once that part happened, then you could stand up. And, of course, you're going to die from radiation and fall out. But they didn't tell you that. They didn't part. tell you that at the time. They just told you, <laughs> you're alive and you can still go, boys. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bear, uh, Bernie Sully wants to know where do I get my T-shirts from. It's called Love in Faith. I-N. Love in Faith. They have a website online. Just look it up and... Uh, who else remembers the blizzard of 68? I remember it. It rained, it snowed 16, uh, 18 inches here in the deep south. Yeah. I got pictures of me as a little kid. The snow was right up, right up to here on me. Moments to Moments Divine says they got their t-shirts from the, the same company, Love and Faith. And uh, they love them. Uh, they're just a soft t-shirt. They, they're not the old thick t-shirts and stuff they're soft and most of their writings and stuff last a long time i've actually wore several of them out over the years oh okay nadia says danny can i start yellow squash now in southern florida oh girl you could have started your squash a month ago in southern florida yeah yeah you got yeah you you need to be getting it going danny was the lack of potassium what made the leaves turn purple uh no the lack of phosphorus Makes the leaves turn purple. Not potassium, phosphorus. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, Carolyn says she lived in Sarasota during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Crazy time. Y'all remember that? When uh, President John F. Kennedy told Russia, 
turn them ships around or we will attack you, you know, and we don't have a president that's that bold anymore. <laughs> now they stick over there and go, please, y'all don't do this now. Can we negotiate some kind of way? When do you put your sweet potato slips in the ground? That's Dee Dee. Uh, after the danger of all frost is gone and I got somewhere to stick them in the ground, I'll do it. Yeah. I can remember when we were young being outside and thinking about the the possibility of bombs coming over or something like that. But we still played outside. We didn't, we, we didn't, we didn't think about much it. about it, but we had heard it at school. Yeah. We had heard something about it at school, so when you were home, you just kind of... You know, it always come to your mind, but I didn't even know people had shelters and stuff in all for years. And then all of a sudden you found out several families had put them in, but yeah. nobody talked about them because they didn't want everybody in their shelter. They didn't want everybody to know where they yeah. <laughs> Jeff says, Danny, are you going to plant the Musaki sweet potatoes again this year? Yes. That is some of the, <clears throat> excuse me, that's some of the best and hardiest sweet potatoes. Now, they're not the best tasting, but they are the hardiest Sweet potatoes, I think we've ever grown. Yeah, okay. Let's see. What did we do? Ah. <clears throat> uh, uh, my new Tennessee home said they dug West snow says, in it. I well, was 12 years old in 1981 and used to watch the news every night just so I could catch President Reagan. <laughs> I love President Reagan. Reagan was one of fun. He was like, well, Nancy and I would like to thank all of y'all for... <laughs> coming along with us today and <laughs> I mean I loved Ronald Reagan Ronald Reagan was one of those that believed in power through strength mm -hmm. and of course if you ever watched his luncheons he always had to tell a joke about the Democrats and everything all right mama's divine is like mm -hmm. you she said she wasn't scared but her mom was y'all Danny has my, stories <laughs> I got I got books of stories about <laughs> my mama you know you know and I always tell people I love my mama you know, my mama used to tell me, son, you got no life and you got no friends and I'm not your mom. <laughs> and, you know, and I love my mom. And you can too for just twelve ninety five. I mean, that's that right. <laughs> no, I was talking about the stories <laughs> of school when your mama would come uh, to school and get you. Yeah. She was my always... mama would come to school and get us. If it come up a bad thunderstorm, she'd come to school and get us. The kids picked on Danny. And we got because... picked on all the time because it come up a bad one. <laughs> oh, the... His mama would show up at school, take all of them out, and take them home and put them on the couch and make them sit yeah. in the line on the couch if it was going to be really bad weather. Yeah. And he got picked on at school because Look, people here say comes I do your a, mama. People say I'd do a good Ronald Reagan. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you a lot. And the thing about Ronald Reagan was Ronald Reagan was a movie star before he was a president. Yeah. Much like Donald Trump. Oh, that was funny. Oh, man, man, man. Yeah, anyway, he does other uh, impressions. I have, yeah, I used to be a an impressionist for many, many years. <laughs> he does what Donald Duck? Well, we do. I, I've done a lot of the cartoon characters and stuff. You're going to tell likes... him. You keep on, you're going to tell him that I've been on TV doing cartoon characters no. and stuff. <laughs> I'm just saying, he, he likes to do that. Okay. He uh he always picks on the grandkids with Donald Duck. I do. Huh. <sighs> yes, we did, Chris. We, we Chris, did. we saw what happened in Russia. Yep, we were notified as soon as it happened. Keep your eyes open. Oh man. Um. All right. I'm not sure. Oh man. Well, I let's never see knew here. somebody to go home because of a storm when I was a kid. We didn't cancel school for it either. Cold to say we didn't. But Danny's mama, My mama would, would go to the school would, and get look, them if it was tornadoes or something. She would get out in the worst weather <laughs> and drive to the school. It could be hailing, tornadoes <laughs> in the area, and my mama would come in there and, get, and go to the principal's office and they'd call us to the front. And we was at school and bad weather come up. The kids in the class would say, well... We know Danny's going to get to go home. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, mom. You know? uh, we just sat in the hallway till it passed over and then went back and took a test yeah, or whatever. <laughs> no, I had to go home. Which, as a kid, I didn't mind it, you know, because I mean? we got to go home. And once it was over, you got to go We got to something. go out and play in the mud holes and stuff. Yeah. 
Uh, and Ronald Reagan was the governor of California. Yeah. He was. I do remember that. I forgot yeah. about that, but yeah. he was. Uh, Danny is Miss Rich Little. Oh, uh, I remember Rich Little. Rich yeah, Little he was did a close. lot of impressions. Yes, well, he did a lot of impressions, and uh, like my fellow Americans, <laughs> like Richard Nixon. <laughs> that was his most famous. That was his I most guess. famous one. Was Richard Nixon? Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, anyway. Carolyn Food Forest 355 says the CIA is at it again. Not only the CIA, but all the three-letter agencies are at it. Not just the CIA. Uh, there was a mass, was it shooting? In a, they were at a concert. At, at a concert, yes. Yes. Yeah, it was at a concert, yeah. Which could, that's just, I will, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. In a place that it, the guy says he's going to retaliate. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much is what he get, what it boils down to. Darling says, never met your mama, but I love her. Well, <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, the art of today says, I still laugh at the shoes being thrown at Bush. Actually, in the Middle East, if you throw your shoe at somebody, that's about the worst that you can do to a person, especially if you're in the, in the uh, uh, Arabic community. Yeah. Uh, Blessings always said they lived in California when Reagan was president. Oh, I can see Red Skeleton perform at the Minnesota State Fair. Oh, oh I love to. Red Skeleton. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Catherine Elkin says, Is there anything on your bucket list that you haven't done yet? What's your wish? <laughs> I haven't been to the moon. No, uh, you don't want to go to the moon. And I don't want to go to the moon because there's already people living up there. And I don't want to intrude upon their privacy. So uh, That's not on your bucket list. That's not on my bucket list. I have been a mile deep in the earth, though. I will tell you that. I've been a mile under the surface of the earth. What, uh, what would you want to do if you could do anything? If I could do anything, what uh, is gosh, I've done everything. What could I want to do? Uh, I mean, I've flown stuff. I've You've done I've, all kinds of stuff. I've done everything I ever wanted to do. Uh, I can't think of nothing I would really... I mean... Have my health back as a youth? You know what I mean? No, but I mean something anywhere. I kind of know. I guess we live our lives day to day uh, not thinking about what we wish we could do long term or, or, you know, we just think about living what we want to do now, planting what we want to plant, enjoying, and if something... And, pops up we go okay let's go do this right now um lots of times we don't even plan a whole lot of things we just go go uh, with the flow i guess raw food writer says should we be concerned because of what happened in russia i think i know the answer well <laughs> let me put it to you this way uh there's a real good possibility that there are people on our side of the line that had something to do with that. Yeah, uh, and go down to... And, nope. Go. Uh, mm. you, you just handle that. Um, right here. Uh, and the VP is blaming Ukraine, so is everybody else. Well, the problem is, if y'all listen to Vladimir Putin, and look, I think the man's serious. Uh, he, he completely made a statement. When it, when it happened, we saw, the, uh, we saw it as soon as it happened there, that, uh, um, you know, he said... Anyone who was involved, not just who done it, but anyone who was involved in it will pay. So it depends on what his terminology of will pay means. Now it could be cyber, it could be actual attack of some kind. I mean, I don't know. Uh, somebody wanted to know, how, could you do John Wayne impressions? Could I do John Wayne? Is that one you do? Let's see here. Yeah, you do. Oh. Uh, wah Pilgrim. It's a long road to the West. <laughs> <laughs> he does do. His dad watched a lot of Westerns yeah. and stuff, so. Um. Oh. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. I'm just trying to read through. Oh, some. you just okay? Because my eyes, I can't hardly see what it's saying there. And every now and then, I can make it out. But um. All right. 
Oh. Not sure what all. Uh, does our son have a dark twin that is coming back around? Well, uh, Rascal's Ranch, uh, the answer to that is more than likely. Uh, some people's calling it a dwarf star. Uh, some people's calling it a binary object. Uh, yes, it's out there. Uh, they've known about it since the early 80s. And they've been tracking it and keeping an eye on it. Um, it's not that it's going to come so close to the earth that it's going to hit the earth or anything like that. It's the magnetic pull uh, that it's going to have. Okay. Um, I haven't had a chance, but I heard Old Alabama Art Gardener was good going to look him up. Um, uh, Old Alabama, Martha B. Old Alabama Gardener passed away a couple of years ago. He, three or uh, four years ago. Yeah, it's been he, a while. And, but his channel is good. It's still up. His family leaves the channel up. Yep, they do, they do leave um, it up. And we got the pleasure of meeting him on several occasions. He came to our house and visited with us one time, him and his wife. Me and Mr. Charles sat down on my porch and talked about the Bible. Now, we didn't film it. No, we did film part of it. Not the Bible. No, y'all talked about that after you we got We talked off. about that because his wife kept waiting in the car on him, remember? Yeah. yeah. She got out and talked to me for a while, and then she decided... She thought he was ready to go, and she said, well, I'm going to go sit in the car. And she took off, and she's, um, is she Filipino? Yeah, uh, I don't remember. She's Asian descent, all she's I She's Asian. I yeah. can't remember. And, um, she and I had a hard time communicating, but we understood each other. She walked around, looked at the plants, and we talked about things like that in simple language. And, uh, had a good visit. And uh, she thought he was ready to go, so she went on to the car, and um, Danny and Mr. Charles decided to sit down and do a porch time chat, and it's on our channel, and she was sitting in the car, and he finally looked at Danny, and he says, well, I know she's ready to go, because she wanted to go visit her family. That's yeah, where they uh, were they were on their They were on their... Uh... Way to visit. No, they were on their uh, honeymoon. anniversary. Anniversary, not honeymoon. Yeah, they were on their anniversary. Uh, they yeah. went to Mobile, and while he was in Mobile, he decided to come on over this away and, yeah. and visit with me. And uh, then when we went to the Great Appalachian Conference, he was there too. She's Korean. Korean, that's it. I knew yeah. I that didn't She was of Asian she's... descent. I know yeah. that. And uh, sweet, uh, sweet couple. Yes. Um, Mr. Charles was a good man. Yeah. Um, now, his biblical beliefs was a little bit different than mine, but you know what? We were mature enough as elderly gentlemen that that didn't get in our way. We they could, just we, sat we and could sit and talk about the Bible and we could enjoy each other's point of view on the scriptures. Yeah. And he has a lot of good information on things. He actually is yes. the one that taught me how to can okra without pressure canning or water bath canning. And so I have a recipe on my channel. Uh, showing how I can okra, and I give him credit, and he has one on canning okra, and so, a couple of other things that he yeah. does, he did that way, and so, um, uh, Mary Floyd says, does the ground need to be a certain temperature for seeds to sprout, and the answer to that would be yes, depending on the seed, depends on what temperature it needs to be, oh yeah, uh, Mr. Charles's sister, Jen, reminded me, Mr. Charles's sister and brother were at the Appalachian Conference. Remember? Oh, yes, 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 they were. Yes. We had a good time talking. We had a good Jen time. And Mike, Mike wasn't there, but Jim was yeah, there. Jim, yeah, Mike wasn't there. Jim was. A um, lot yeah. of people. Um, okay. Give it a second. Give it a check. Give it a second. Yeah. Uh, he did squash like, like okra. I thought it was squash, but I wasn't going to say for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Allison's got it there. Cannon okra. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got to talk. Um, okay, this is one over. Lori Bosch says, do you believe in pre- or post-tribulation rapture? I don't believe in either, okay? I am more of a mid-tribulation type person uh, rather than a pre. I, I was raised Southern Baptist and Independent Baptist mm -hmm. and... All I was ever told was pre-tribulation rapture, and 
I don't argue it with anybody. Uh, I always tell people like me and my neighbor, Daryl, over here. Daryl's a pre-trib. I'm a mid-trib. And I always tell him, I say, Daryl, you need to prepare like it's going to be mid-trib. But if it happens to be pre-trib, me and you will high-five in the sky. You know what I mean? Neither one of us argue with each other about it. I hope and pray it's pre-trib. But I can't really bank on that because I can't really find it strong enough in the scriptures for me to believe it. So, And everybody goes to Thessalonians and different places like that. But there's a lot more verses in the Bible that deals with it than that. Um, next Nexit said, do we want any persimmon seeds? No, we have no. persimmon trees out the yin We We <laughs> mow them down. We have so many of them. Uh, we actually have some. They're tame persimmons and wild persimmons everywhere. Um, uh, Mr. Donnie said, I used to be pre-trib. I'm post-trib now. Uh, I, I'm, Mr. Donnie, I lean from mid-trib to post-trib. Uh, somewhere in that range in there because most people don't understand Jacob's troubles do not start until after the first three and a half years of the tribulation and uh, the first three and a half years are basically pretty peaceful uh, to be honest with you and uh, the, the wrath of God does not take place until the middle of the week which is after the first three and a half years of the tribulation so uh, and people go, yeah, but we're not going to be here for the wrath of God. And I'm like, hey, you know, I can believe that. But the wrath of God doesn't start till the middle of the week. So why, why would he take us out early? You know, I, I don't, I don't get it. You know, uh, do I can turkey? Yes, I do. Uh, if so, do I raw pack or pre cook it? Usually turkey, I take the, like the bones and the pieces that I don't want to just cook. Mm -hmm. And I boil them down, make my broth, take all the meat off, throw the bones out, and can the broth and the meat. About 90 minutes. Wait, yeah, if it's got meat in it, 90 minutes. If you do just the broth, I think it's like 40 minutes yeah. or something. Blessings always says, Mr. Danny, if the ground is cold, will my peas sprout? If I wait for the soil to warm, it gets too hot for peas to make. Now, when we talk about peas, now there's a difference. You've got field peas and cow peas, and then you've got what we call English peas or snow peas. Or green peas. Or green peas. Green peas, English peas, snow peas need to be planted when the ground is cold. Uh, field peas, uh, cow peas, like black-eyed peas, red ripper peas, pink-eyed purple hole peas, all that kind of stuff needs to be planted after the ground gets warm. And it don't get too hot for them. Okay. And I'm like Vicky said. Vicky said we can speculate all day long, but only he knows. Exactly. And he doesn't mean for us all to agree. No. It would be a boring world if everybody agreed, and there's no point in arguing it. Uh, one person reads the Bible. I mean, I grew up mid-trib all the way. Uh, I've never even knew there was a pre-trib rapture. Never heard it until... Gosh, I was in my 30s, 40s, somewhere along there, and I thought people were crazy. <laughs> so, Because yeah. I said, when I read the Bible, that's not what I get. I said, where did this come from? And so I had people explaining it to me, and I said, I still, you explain your purpose, and I don't see it. So we agree to disagree. Wanda, what is your canning channel, says Doreen? Uh, crazy, crazy Days. D-A-Z-E-S. C-R-A-Z-Y D-A-Z-E-S. Um, okay, now here, yeah, as it is in the days of Noah and Lot, then we will be harpazoed in the twinkling of an eye. Harpazoed is a Greek word, which means to be called up or to called out. Uh, as it in the days of Noah and the days of Lot are two different scenarios completely. Somebody wants to know, do you do a good Bill Clinton impression? Do I do a good Bill Clinton? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I'd think about that one. Uh, no one knows a day and a time. That's, that's what I got that's the way we. That's the way we feel about it. We live every day. We enjoy the day. If he wanted to know, I like ABZ, a, XYZ. He said, if he wanted us to know, he'd have told us. Exactly. So we could know when, to, when things were going to happen. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, 
That's why Laura says, I'm a pan trip. It'll all pan out. Yep. I, that's the way we look at it. And I'm like Evelyn. Now, Evelyn has a, has a good comment there. I pray that I can withstand persecution when it comes. In this country, we really think that we've been persecuted. And the, and the truth of the matter is, no, we haven't. Uh, we have not really seen any kind of persecution. And we think if we get our feelings hurt, we've been persecuted. And that's not it. And God gives us the faith. If you walk out on faith to make it through, he takes us through things. He doesn't take us away from things. That's one thing. I, that's why I guess this wow. pre-rapture thing I couldn't understand. Everybody wants to leave before something happens. Yeah. And in this world, things <clears throat> happen to us every day. It happens to all kinds of people all day, every day. And they're not raptured out. And um, now we won't see his wrath. I understand that. We're not going to see that. I don't think that, I don't think that, the, the, that the born again children of God will have to go through any kind of wrath. No, but you will have You will have troubles, troubles and persecution because it tells you you will. Yeah. Did you escape Cal get hurt? No, no. no Ms. She was just walking around eating. <laughs> she was, she was just <laughs> eating minding her own business. She was just eating around. Just... We looked at the blueberries, couldn't see that she actually ate any, but she was in them. Um, where else? Um, you saw her all around in the yard and stuff like that. She just made her trip around and around trying to get back in. She wanted back in, but she also enjoyed eating. Every time one of them gets out, we have our perimeters fenced. Yeah. And so, you know, they're pretty good. Yeah. Um, we are at 8 o'clock, guys. What do you use to control grasshoppers? <laughs> we <laughs> <Nothing>. don't. We <laughs> just pick the grasshoppers off by hand. If you go out first thing in the morning right at daylight, you can pick those grasshoppers right off of them plants and put them in a thing and feed them to your chickens. Uh, but if you wait till the sun comes up and it starts to get warm, you can't get rid of the stink bugs. You can't get rid of the grasshoppers or nothing like that. Stink bugs, first thing in the morning before the sun comes up, is right on the tip top of the plants, just sitting up there waiting for you to just to pick them right off and put them in a bowl of soap water. Um, we don't plant the Danvers half longs anymore. We've been planting the Corota uh, carrots for what about three years at, at least, maybe four. I can't remember. Um, we did plant one year. We planted several different types from Hoss Tools. And all of those did fantastic. We did some yellow ones and two or three different types. I think Danvers was one of them, but I can't remember the others. We did purple carrots. We did orange carrots, yellow carrots. We did a whole variety that year and made We've got videos. Y'all just <laughs> type in carrots and you'll find stuff. I agree with Mr. Donnie and them um, about this Left Behind series and the movies. Mm -hmm. It's giving people a, a wrong picture about how that things will probably turn out. And they've, they've basically thrown their hands up in the air and said, well, we're going to be raptured out of here, so what difference does it make? I mean, i got family who believes that way, you know I mean? Well, those, those books, I read all of them. They, they are, some of the storyline is out of sequence. It's not following the Bible step by step by step by step. And if you are a true Bible reader and you read in depth uh, Revelation, you can catch well. the discrepancies and what they did and so it's it's a what it is it's a good fiction read you know oh that's, man they're that's all it. they're all want me to do a bill clinton oh no <laughs> i don't know if i can do a bill clinton i mean what what does bill clinton sound like let's see what would if i had to do a bill clinton what would it be um i've not seen the chosen so i don't know oh man how would that go again that's another fiction movie uh, um how would, what would Bill Clinton even say? I mean, and what does his voice? Well, even... the only thing that pops into my mind, I don't know if you want to say. Oh that. yeah, I did. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't say that. I mean, that's about I mean, the that's, only thing that that's only thing. about when I think of him. That's the only thing that pops into my mind. Then I'm like, um, okay. he's like, no, I can't, I can't, I can't do it because I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> <laughs> can't do it. Oh. Uh, uh, I did not have sex with that woman. Yeah. yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, that, First turn off you your brain to... like a dog. Like, then you can do a... Uh, no, your dumbass is right. Uh, no. 
I did not have sex with that woman. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Oh, man, man. Everybody's saying. <laughs> <laughs> Only they didn't put the word sex. They yeah, had relations. Yeah. And that might have been what he said. I don't remember. No, he did. He didn't. He said the actual word. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, man, man, man. Yeah. Um, oh, man. So everybody's laughing at you. Oh, man. All right. Y'all put up your prayer request because we yeah. will be doing a prayer in just a few minutes. And, uh,. I don't know what else. Um, ah, Danny does impressions off and on. I do, and all he kinds. used to when we first married. He doesn't do it as much now as he did when we <clears> first <throat> married. But it didn't matter what was said. If it was a line in a song, he would start singing that song. And I know a lot of people do that kind of stuff. And uh, we could be picking blueberries out of his mom's and I would say something and if part of the word was or the, something I said might be like the sun will come out tomorrow mm -hmm. or something, he would start singing that song, you know, and kept me laughing and Elvis, yeah. he would do Elvis all the time. Oh, I used to do Elvis Presley all the time. Yeah, yeah. he was, it was always Elvis and stuff like that. Um, always keep me laughing. Oh, Will Be Cool says, please don't do an impression of Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, no, no, no. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, he sings an awesome Elvis. Um, I did put up on Patreon something you singing. What were you singing that I caught you singing? Was it Elvis Presley? No, Wayfair and Stranger. No. Uh, no. No. I, no, you did. No, I was singing. Um, was it Elvis? No, it was... Uh, you were laying on the couch and you didn't know I was even videoing. I, well, if, it, if I didn't know you was videoing more, then I don't know. But uh, Yeah, it's on Patreon, I, I think. Still don't, I still may not know. Somebody um, tell me what I put up. I can't remember. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, they want you to do an Elvis impression. Oh, no, no, no. I can't do an Elvis. Yes, you can. Um, Wise men say only fool. Fall in love. <laughs> uh, who won the Vago bed? But I can't tell. Falling in love with you. <laughs> now, let's see if Surely we get... Surely to the sea. Just wait and let... Darling, so YouTube. it goes. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube's going to click us okay, off. Okay, we're going to get clicked off. Okay. Now, I don't yeah. know. Oh, they man. will, if you start doing stuff like that, they will say, uh, mm, uh, demonetize. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure they will. Oh. Um, anyway. Yeah. Let's see. I can't remember what, what it was you... Allison said it was Elvis that I put up. I can't remember what song you were singing. There is no telling. Could have been Hound Dog. It could no, have been, it was uh, not. It was a serious. Well, song. bless my soul. What's wrong with me? I bet you like the man on a fuzzy tree. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one thing on the top of my mind. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, he'll get us. I'll get us. us I, well, some. some yeah. Stuff on YouTube pulling us for singing songs, but it's funny. If they do, oh well. It is. It is what it is. Y'all go to Pecan Grove and find us over there because Danny's uh, singing Elvis songs. <laughs> the Anchor Holes. That, was that it? Yeah, you got me doing the Anchor Holes. I think that might have been it. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, who sings that song? Oh, man. I have journeyed. Through the long dark night, out on the open sea. Um, oh, not Michael. Michael. No, Bolton. Michael Bolton. It's not Michael Bolton. What is his name? My I... name. My mind just went just as blank as it could be. That's terrible when you get uh, to be so, old. Somebody was saying if I got serenad serenaded like that, I'd be mush. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm all shook up. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Teddy well, Bolt. my tongue gets tight when I'm trying to speak. Ray and my Bolt. inside is shaking like a leaf on a tree. Yeah, Ray Bolts. I yeah. knew the name, but I couldn't think. Yeah. Do I have allergies? Yes, sometimes. Sometimes she does. It all depends. Some of them are psychological. Some of them are not. 
You got psychological too. <laughs> I do. <laughs> All right. So, uh, oh, man. what about the Statlers? No, Statlers? I don't do the Statler. Anyway. The winner did claim the Vago bed. Miss Nadia, yep. she's in our uh, chat. She's in our chat, yeah. And uh, she'll probably get it in a couple of weeks. They'll send it off. Let's hopefully. hope she gets it faster than that. The long black train. <laughs> Seeing the long black train. Yeah. Oh. There's Miss Nadia. She's telling Danny to sing it. Sing it, Danny. All right. Yeah, I was the lead singer for a group when I was younger and got out of it after a while. I had to get on with my life. I couldn't couldn't play my whole life, you know. I don't do impressions. <laughs> oh. Staying alive. Staying alive. <laughs> uh, uh, sweet home out. Oh, don't get him started on Alabama. Oh he my gosh. Alabama. I love Alabama. I and love Randy and Alabama. Randy and him. Oh, they're good friends. I love Randy and him. Now I yeah. do um Every now and then I can catch him singing Alabama. Yeah. Uh, he, he'll get on a roll. Now she's a lady down on love. She needs somebody to gently pick her up. Okay, that's enough. Oh, uh, when we were at the Appalachian Homestead Conference that year, Danny and Patera and Tommy Alderman. Oh, we all sang. Uh, me and sang. Patera sang Rocky Top Tennessee. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to, I think that video's still Dang. up because um, it was a live stream. We went live after everybody went home. Or what? No, that was before the, that was the day before. That was the day after we, no, it was the day, the night of. Was it the night of? The night of. We stayed That's late. Right. We stayed we late. We stayed that late. Night. Everybody yeah. went home by five, six o'clock, seven, and we stayed and did a live stream. So there's a live stream out there somewhere, and uh, Danny and Patera started singing, and they sang Rocky Top Tennessee. They sang several songs. Got into singing a lot of gospel. Tommy Alderman started singing, yeah. in, and um, then there were several other women and men all around singing. Um, I just can't remember who all, but I remember Tommy because Danny and Tommy were just going at it. Patera was looking at him like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me and Tommy sang the gospel songs. We were singing a lot of gospel songs. Yeah. And Patera has an amazing voice. I have to admit, the girl she has, does. She has an amazing voice. Yeah. She does have a good voice. Yeah. And Tommy does too. Tommy sings off and on. Um, and that would be Alderman Farms. Yeah. That year there was a lot of us there. Um, and actually, I don't know if it's still up, but Patera uh, and Starry and I were dancing to. What was that song? Oh, it was a very popular song. It was a popular song. And I, I don't dance. Yeah. And Patera kept saying, come on. And Starry goes, I don't dance either. And so she's dancing and making me and Starry. And it did. It, it did get on video <laughs> a little short portion yeah. of it oh i remember uh, three times a lady yeah that was uh what's the one Kenny on? rogers no three no. times a lady he's on lionel richie lionel richie yeah 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 um conway twitty conway twitty. Now, Dan danny sings i sing some conway twitty conway, yeah. yeah yeah so Actually, Conway Twitty and Elvis Presley were rivals in a lot of ways, and a lot. And as a matter of fact, some of uh, Alabama songs was Conway could have wanted one of his songs. As a matter of fact, Randy was talking yeah. about that. Yeah. Freebird, I remember Freebird. Vicky says music ran on my dad's side of the family. I could almost carry a tune in a manuscript. <laughs> yeah. My dad used to say that his brother got all the talent because he could play every instrument. Now his brother did not sing. Then we had some, who was it? Johnny Cash. Daddy sang bass. Mama sang tenor. <laughs> yeah. So my dad said he couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. Um. Yeah, Danny sang a lot of uh, gospel songs. I sang a lot of gospel songs. Things song. like that. Yeah. Um, Daddy's hands were kind, but they were 
hard when I done wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a friend that changed the words to that to a gospel song, and my oldest daughter and a friend of hers sang that song, and it was beautiful. I don't know if they still have the words, but years ago they sang that as a gospel song, and it was awesome. Uh, uh, Merle Haggard. I actually had two family members that played in Merle Haggard's band. Um, All right, so you go and say a prayer so you can give them a... I, yeah. Kind of, oh, oh, wait, before we do anything. Before we do this, we got to say thanks to a couple of people. I for, almost forgot. Miss um, um, Miriam sent us a letter, and we want to say thank you to Miss Miriam. Thank you, Miss Miriam, for the letter. And Miss Nancy sent some... Um, uh, blue bonnets. From Texas. I, I think they're in the envelope. I ain't going to take them out. Oh, yeah, okay. Anyway, some seeds for We got blue some blue bonnet seeds from Miss Wanda here from Miss Nancy, so... I want to say thank you all for that. Um, anyway, guys, we've had a lot of fun here tonight. We just enjoy ourselves. And um, laughter is good for the soul. I try I used to try to keep as many people laughing as I could. And um, it helped me to deal with a lot of things I had to face day to day in my life and situations I had to go through and things I didn't like doing that I had to do. And music was my escape for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's... Uh, I don't have that as an escape anymore, I guess you might I say. I guess I'm the same way. When I was young, I took piano lessons, and I can only play by note, and I usually only play gospel, and it's the old-timey gospel, and most of what I play is what Danny would call the octave chord, back yeah, and back forth, and forth yeah. you know. I don't do the... But it was plenty for me, and I love it, and I, I love the escape. And I haven't had a piano in several years, but I did buy a keyboard about a year ago. And I really, once I got it, it it's just not the same. It's not like playing a, an actual piano. So I don't know, maybe my hands may not even go there anymore. But I yeah. used to love when I was upset or hurt or angry or just feeling good sometimes, I would play the piano. My mom always knew if I, something, I was mad about something. She said I would play every song and just keep going. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I sang a lot of gospel. I sang a lot of country. You know, I sang a lot of church hymns, different stuff like that. I've done a lot of singing in cantatas, and uh, I was a lead singer for a group for several years. Uh, so, it, you know, when you're younger, you know, you, I just enjoy enjoy stuff like that. And, and I still do sing to myself occasionally. I don't. And to me. Uh, and to Miss Wanda every now and then. Uh, we had a preacher that um, he he went to Mexico a lot as a missionary, and uh, older man, but he learned to sing when the roll is called up yonder, the chorus in Spanish. Oh, that's beautiful. And every time we sang that song in church, you could hear him over everybody else singing his part in Spanish every time. I I won't ever forget that. That was yeah, that was pretty cool to hear him sing in Spanish. Ah, uh, okay. We gotta pray where we can uh, let everybody get to bed tonight. Father, we thank you so much. You've uh, you've allowed us to enjoy a good night tonight. Uh, you kept down the problems on the channel, and we've all been able to laugh and carry on and have a good time, Father. Uh, you've told us in Scripture that laughter is a good medicine for us. Uh, you've also told us, I believe it was in Ecclesiastes, there's a time to laugh, there's a time to cry. You know, there's a time to be happy, there's a time to die, there's a time for everything, Father. And you've told us that, and we need to have the wisdom and understanding to know which is which. And right now is a time to be serious. So as we approach the throne of grace, we want to ask that you uh, look down upon this chat tonight. Father, there's been a lot that's uh, got praying for family members I've seen go by. Some people are having uh, surgeries and uh, some are going through cancer treatments and um, some are going for testes and things like this, Lord. Some are having some financial issues. Some of them have some... And, and some just have personal unspoken requests and sometimes these are the ones that are really closest to the heart and really they're, they're really closer to your heart father and we and they're so sensitive that they can't even speak them but yet their heart cries out to you and and father we ask that you answer all the requests that's been made tonight in a way father that will bless the individual plus it will bring glory to your kingdom 
Father. And Lord, we don't know what's going to happen here in the next few weeks uh, as we move forward. But we know that uh, there's been a lot of airplanes in the sky. There's been a lot of helicopters in the sky all over the nation. We know that something is brewing. Uh, we know that the country's preparing for something. And Father, as your children, I'm asking that you please help us to be able to see. You said you would never hide anything from us. So Father, give us a heads up when it's time and, when, and the ability to know what to do and to be able to have the resources to do it. And we will give you the honor, the praise, and the glory for everything that goes on in our lives, Father. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for the people that showed up tonight. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, okay. I hear an airplane right now. <laughs> okay, so before we get Danny's tip, uh, next Saturday night, Danny and I talked about this earlier, um, we're going to start going back to our 8 o'clock thing. Uh, during the winter, it's just easier for us to do seven, but when it gets summertime, yeah, it's hard for us to stop and get in here well, by in, seven. In the deep south, the evenings is when it cools off enough for us to do something. Yeah. So around seven o'clock, we're usually still out working in our gardens or something like that. So we may, I'm not going to say it'll be next week, but probably. Probably will be. Well, yeah, it probably will be. We probably yeah. go back to eight o'clock. Because today even we thought about, you know. Everybody's kind of gotten used to the 7 right now, but we're probably going back to the 8 o'clock. It would be easier on us to do 8 o'clock. Um, so, some of you, y'all y'all just make that note, 8 o'clock, because y'all probably ain't going to get no uh, notification. Yeah. <laughs> y'all don't get notifications anyways. Um, I saw something today, and I don't know where I saw it, but it, there's a new thing on YouTube that you have to go in and do some things to get notifications from some of your people because there are people that they don't want out there they consider that they consider possibly not something they want to throw everywhere there's a button somewhere and I, I'm gonna have to go find it and I might have to do a video <clears throat> on it but you may have to go in and, and go down through a process to find where they're talking about but uh, it's all because of they're wanting to limit some political things <laughs> yeah i mean so, well, well the thing about it is is if we enter into this new phase in our country that we're going to be entering into here shortly we're going to need to be growing all the food that we can grow and wanda and i do not want to come on here at seven o'clock in the summertime and prevent y'all from having to uh you know from being able to be out in your gardens doing stuff and things like that we'd rather wait and just do it at eight o'clock so that uh uh, everybody has time to get their animals put up or milk their animals or take care of the garden or, you know, just different things like that so that you don't feel stressed or pressured into getting here early. Yeah. So it would be 8 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock Eastern. Yes. And it would be even better for those that live toward the West Coast. Well, not necessarily, because then they're well, probably the ones outside. <laughs> they're probably still outside. I mean, especially in California, they're still two hours behind us. But uh, yeah. Anyway, they're asking for a tip tonight. Now, what can we do for a tip tonight? Let's see. Let's see. What have I been involved in this week that I could give them a tip on? Oh, man. I sat through so, so many things this week. No, he slept uh, all day. Every day. Yeah, right. He sleeps. He sleeps yeah, through stuff. Just ask. Chris will tell you better than that. Chris says, um, Danny, don't ever slow down. <laughs> Chris says, I don't never stop. Uh, I'm like the Energizer Bunny. Uh, let's put it this way. Okay, I got to watch how I say what I say. But I also want to, I want to uh, uh, let y'all know things um, without letting you know things. Okay, let's put it, <clears throat> put it that way. Uh, we'll use the word allegedly tonight. Uh there's been some speculation that allegedly uh, this summer there's going to be catastrophic flooding and drought on the eastern side of the United States. Not all at once. Uh, not all at <laughs> once now. But uh, so allegedly behind the scenes. 
the well-to-do, the elite, or however you want to say it, are already preparing for a lot of fires to, to be burning up and down the eastern side of the United States. So my tip for tonight would be to try to do everything you can to get things in order. Uh, if you have anything around your home that would cause it to uh, a, fire, <clears throat> a fire to get close to your home, I would start now cleaning stuff back away from the house uh, because there are some things going on in the magnetosphere around the earth right now that uh, is not good. Let me put it that way. And in the next several months, it's going to be very, very, uh, it's going to be a very, very difficult time for the eastern side of the United States. Now, not to say they won't be things on the, west. on the western side, because they will still be, and in the central part, and I've told y'all, anything above that 33rd parallel, you know, it's just going to be difficult. Uh, there's going to be a lot of disaster along the 33rd parallel. Um, you can grow things anywhere, anytime. Yeah, you'll still be able to do things, grow it things. It be difficult. It's just going to be harder. And it's know? harder for us. Down in the deep south down here, we're going to have to contend with tremendous amounts of heat, you know. Right now, uh, it's like fluctuation. The well, temperature's back and forth. And our plants, the cell structure in our plants down south here can't get regulated because one day it's 40 uh, that morning and it's up to 80 during the day. And then the heat index will be 93. And then we're back down to 41 the next morning. I mean, plant cell structure don't function well in that. Seeds don't want to come up because the ground cannot warm up enough for it to come up. Uh, we're also going to be dealing with... Uh, the ocean temperatures are going to be rising tremendously this year, uh, especially the shallower parts of the ocean, like the Gulf of Mexico, along the eastern seaboard where it's shallower at, places in like that where the water is shallower, the ocean is going to really start heating up, and when it does, the storms that form over the ocean are going to be horrible this year. They're looking for a jet stream change this summer, uh, we're going to actually do a flip-flop this summer. We're going to go from an El Nino to a La Nina. Usually we go to a neutral phase first, but we're actually just going to flip this summer. And because of that, it's going to cause uh, a lot of chaotic weather. And it seems to be, <coughs> excuse me, that most of it's going to be uh, along the southern and eastern part of the United States. Um, now, like I said, not to say that the other parts of the United States are not going to have their problems, because they will. But it seems like there is going to be more focused on the 33rd parallel and the eastern side of the United States. We actually have some new uh, fracture zones along the western Appalachian mountain chain that they're not talking about. So, uh, these are just things that that are floating around out there and allegedly is being talked about. Yeah, and somebody's saying something about the cicadas. Yes, this is the year of the cicadas. Uh, it was supposed to be a, uh, the 17 year cycle is supposed to be this year. And not only is the year of the cicadas, it's also the year of the grasshoppers. We're going to have a combination of both of them at the same time. Yeah. Um, uh, Jay Robinson said, how far down the East Coast? From Florida to Canada. So that's about as far as you can go. Yeah, everybody's going to have issues. And it's going to be different <clears throat> from, I mean, not to say totally different, but it is going to be a little odd. Um, here... The drought did us in. I mean, we have drought. Every we have year. droughts every year, but not like we had last, this last year. Last year was extreme. I don't know. I've never seen anything like that in, and I'm all my years. Well, I will uh, tell you this. I, I started not to say anything about this, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> uh, be prepared for power outages. Uh, there is speculation floating around out there. 
that there could be 30 days with no power. Um, For one reason or another. It yep, could, you yeah, take not a gonna, choice of reasons. I'm not going to tell you how it's going to happen because then I would be treading on some thin ice with YouTube and stuff like that. But um, let's just say that there's been some things found in Transformers. A uh, company that I'm involved with found some things in a Transformer that uh, uh, they didn't expect. Let's just put it that way. So there's the high probability of some power outages uh, this summer. Yeah. And I'm kind of like, who is this that says this? Moments Divine? I'm like Moments Divine. We know the end, and it's all good. Yep. That's why I said, what does it matter what happens? Yeah. When it happens. You do the best you can do. You prepare for what you can prepare for. And when something happens, yep. we all adapt to the situation. It doesn't matter. I mean, many of you are going through uh, problems at work. Some of you have health problems and all this. When it hits, you, you don't know when it's going to hit. But nope. when it hits, you adapt. Yeah. You change and you focus something else. If everybody sat down and whined and cried because something happened, we'd all be sitting down whining and crying. Or right, you assess the situation yeah. when it happens, you adapt to the situation, and then you overcome it. And I you mean, can move forward. That's what our forefathers did. Mm -hmm. And if at all possible, that's what we need to do. Yeah. Um, and to having things on hand that you know you can use. Um, plenty of water, plenty of food. Um, not saying you got to have a huge supply of food, uh, but you do no, need to have some. Uh, a lot of people live week to week at the grocery store. Uh, I would advise at least month to month, <laughs> you know, and extra water, um, a way to cook other than an electric stove. Yeah. Just in case, because mm -hmm. here in the South, we always know that like hurricane season's our big thing. And we always, most anybody in the South can cook outside because they've been through a hurricane yeah <laughs> so that's one of our things the thing about it we read the last chapter in the book so that's all that matters to us we know the end we know who's going to win and i don't worry about uh what uh i don't worry about what's going to happen in between because what's going to happen in between is all speculation you yeah. know so we know what the lord has told us is going to happen and we know how it's going to end. All right, guys, we got to go. Got a few things to do. Yep. And uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Thank you, guys. Let me find where I'm at. There you go. Keep on. You're going to get it right.